Hello and welcome to the first part of how to make a coin in Blender. In this video we're going to go over the importance of gathering references and we're also going to start generating our base mesh. Hello, um, welcome to this tutorial on how to make a stylized coin in Blender. Um, so my aim for this video, um, I want to cover the entire process of doing a low poly mesh to a higher poly mesh, texture baking, texturing, and then throwing it into Unreal Engine. Um, so from the videos I've seen online, ones I've watched over the years, a lot of the videos are just, um, I do you copy, I do you copy. Um, there's, there's not really any explanation of the tools that you're using or speaking about uh, important processes like actually gathering references to kind of help sway the design of whatever it is you're making. Um, so to start with, before I make anything, I always jump onto either Pinterest, Google, etc. And I try and find images that are gonna inspire me um, or things that I can base whatever it is I'm making around. Um, so Pinterest is a wicked tool, it's very uh, useful. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start looking for coins that I like. Um, so it could be like really generic coins like so, and I'm going to be using PureRef to kind of make like a mood board of all the ones that are inspiring me. So if you go to pureref.com, press download. Um, obviously donate if you want to support the, um, the development of the software, but pick your platform. If you go to custom amount and just type in zero, 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 there we go. Um, and then press download. You can download it for free. Um, but it's a very useful tool, um, especially when you're collating loads of different images from different sources. So as I'm going around, I'm just trying to find things that interest me. So for example, all of these little gold icons at the bottom, they could be elements I'm going to put in the middle of my coin. So let's click, drag it into Pura. And I'll just keep scooting along until I find some funky looking ones. Um, so little coin stacks, quite nice. I, I prefer coins that are more kind of beaten up as opposed to being perfectly round, just because it gives us opportunity to sculpt. Um, coin comes about. Let's see if there's any better ones. Ah, there we go. So things like this, kind of where you've got like the damage on the corners. Um, so I'll just take that, drag it in. These are more what I'm looking for. Very nice. Um, and I really like the ones that don't really have really perfect edges. They're kind of all messed up. Um, so instead of it being perfect, a perfect cylinder, um, it showed that coins have been dropped, damaged, or the manufacturing process is not um, perfected yet. It's kind of given us them. Um, like these ones are very nice. Be very fun to make. We'll take that one. Beautiful. So it's up to you how many references you gather. Um, I think normally eight is a quite a nice minimum, um, but for doing something like a coin, you don't need excessive amounts because it's a pretty simple shape to be making. Um, but if you're making something like a gun or like a, a sword, for example, it might be that you're trying to get various references from different angles, um, just so you can kind of see how the, the shape is forming into other shapes. So here we are. Once I have got my references, all beautiful, I jump into Blender. And if you right click on PureRef and go to mode and always on top, even when I click in Blender, my reference board will stay here. And then I can just resize this and chuck it somewhere that I'm not gonna be using very often. Um, so I think for the most part, we're gonna go for a shape like this. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight vertices, all we need. So if we, delete the default cube from your screen. And if you go to add mesh cylinder, and before we move it, so the issue is if I move it, this little pop-up in the bottom left will disappear. Um, so as soon as I move it, I no longer have the option to change how many faces I have. So I'm gonna delete it, add mesh cylinder. Click on the little pop-up in the bottom left, and I'm just gonna change the vertice count to eight, which gives us a, that looks too much in my opinion. Too little. Hmm. I think seven is actually quite nice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, oh, that is right. Okay. 
I think I was counting sides originally as opposed to vertices, but that's fine. Um, so I'm going to go with seven vertices. So I'm trying to get that kind of low poly stylized look. Um, so if I make it really round, um, it's still going to look stylized, but I think in terms of silhouette and the final look of the coin, it's going to look quite generic. Um, unlike all the other ones that you see online, which is a little bit boring. Um, so we created a cinder. Um, we've lowered the amount of vertices that it has, so it's not so dense in terms of uh, sides. And all I'm going to do is press the R on my keyboard, and I'm just going to suck it in. Um, so right now I'm just trying to get the, the height of it, so kind of the thickness of my actual coin. So something like that is quite nice. And the coin itself, the, the low poly especially, is going to be really easy to model. Um, the only bit that's probably going to be hard is when we're adding like these smaller details on the inside. Um, but as soon, as soon as we've got like a clear idea on what it is that we want on the inside, it will be very, very easy. Maybe we'll just do a dollar sign. Or maybe we'll leave it blank. Who knows? Um, we'll see what pops into my head. I might actually make it a tiny bit fatter. There we go. Right, so right now we're in object mode. Um, so for me to actually edit the geometry, the topology rather, I need to jump into edit mode. So if I press one, two, or three on the keyboard, just a reminder, I use the industry compatible. So if you're using Blender defaults and you're like, my hotkeys aren't working, that is the reason. Um, and also if I turn on, da, 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 da. Ah, that's fine, it is fine. So, if we look at a reference, any reference, um, we can see that we've got this inner circle that's kind of been extruded in on itself. So all I need to do, if I press free on my keyboard to go into face mode, is click on the top and the bottom face. And if I press I on my keyboard, and I click this little icon and drag it in, the issue that I have with this tool, so this tool is called the insert. Um, so essentially what it's doing is making a face within a face. Um, and the main issue I have with it, the circle is so small that it's kind of based on how far away or close your camera is. So if I'm really close and I drag it, you can see I don't have much tolerance in terms of how much I can drag it. If I'm really far away and I drag it, I've got a lot more tolerance in how far I can go. So a, a little trick for you. Um, if you move your mouse away from your object and click and hold the scroll wheel and then drag it towards your object, um, it's a lot easier for you to be quite precise on how you want it to be done. Um, so I think that's quite a nice thickness in terms of where the extrude is going to be. And because I've selected both faces by holding shift, I've got the top and the bottom exactly the same. So next thing we want to do, um, we want to extrude it in. So the extrude in is going to give us this, uh, this depth from the top to the bottom. So if I press control and E, not that, I'm on the wrong. If I press control and E for extrude, and I pull it up, or push it in rather, from the top it's going to look fine, but from the bottom we can see that it's also pushed that face in the same direction. So all this is doing is extruding in one direction, um, where in our case we want that top bit to be extruded down, and we want the bottom bit to be extruded up um, to make it look the same on both. So. Um, the reason this happens is when I'm extruding is just doing it one way. So we we need to use a different extrude method. And the extrude method we're going to use is called extrude along normals. So if you click and hold on extrude and then just move down to the one that says extrude along normals. And now when I do it, we can see that the, the front is pinching in and the bottom is pinching up, um, which is what we want. So what is a face normal or a normal? Um, so the normal is basically the direction that the face is looking. So if I turn this on, these uh, lines are representing the normal direction of all the faces that are currently on this coin. So we can see that this one is facing this way. This one is facing up. This one is facing up. The ones on the bottom will be facing down. Um, so by using extrude on normals, it's just taking the actual normal data of that face. And that's what determines what direction it's going to go in. So I'm just going to suck it in a little bit, maybe like so. It's quite nice. And pretty much the the basic shape is pretty much there. 
Um, and then it, it's just a case of us actually adding additional parts so we can make a higher poly. Okay, so let's recap what we've done so far. In this video, we gathered some references for us to model our coin, and we also generated our base mesh. In the next video, we're going to be going over how to make our base mesh into a high poly mesh and how we can prep it for Sculptum. Thanks for watching. If you want access to this series before anyone else, as well as project files, polls, and creator challenges, please check out our Patreon. Thank you to our subscribers. We'll see you next time.